this is the problem, or the scope of the problem, and it's also an incubator for the future, from what, what I know. This is the environment which a large number of people live in. These are landfill swamps. The organization that we put together here across multiple universities, starting with Rutgers, is in power. And it's integrated school, community design, and renewable resource oriented. I know that's a mouthful, but basically it means building a community around, uh, around the resources in the landfill. People are already living there, they're already sorting through it. You're going to try to basically create the situation that improves their quality of life. This is a little cut off, but uh, basically, this is saying our mission. Our mission is to couple waste and energy processes with, with the landfill community and the infrastructure and the school to make the school and their environment self-sustaining. So they're not just living in the garbage dump. I mean, literally living in a garbage dump, right? And it's a co-op-based process. You want them to be invested into it. You want them to take part in it and to own it. The more intangible view of this is, is that you're taking a form of poverty, if there are forms of poverty, and you're converting it into a mechanism, an actual system, a machine, in essence, something that will improve the, these individuals, their quality of life, so that they can contribute to society. Here's a satellite view of one of the sites, and it's just to give you an idea that Basically, uh, basically, it's a big dark spot, and it's usually around any large population uh, city. Lagos, Pakistan, Cambodia, these all have them. Here's a simplistic model of what we're talking about. And basically, you have a school, a health clinic, you have a recycling area, and you have a biodigester, and you have an output which is compost. It sounds a bit maybe convoluted for everyone right now, but what this is saying is that these people live in the environment. They're sorting through the garbage already, trying to find basically recycled. The garbage is always on fire, and they're trying to get the necessary resources to survive. So you're trying to restructure that into a fashion that will make it easier, make their quality of life better. And in this case, this is a unique, one unique case that we're working with, is a man built a school in the garbage dump already, and he has dealing with a thousand kids, trying to get them an education so that they don't have to continue to live in that landfill. Right? And this isn't my idea or anyone's idea. This is hundreds of thousands of people working towards something they may not truly understand at one point in time, but that can be fleshed out if they work together. So here's a flow diagram. Basically, garbage comes in for a nearby, let's say, 20 million person city. It's the big loop, right? And the small loop is the landfill community and the recycling and the digester. The digester is basically a big container full of decomposing waste and you capture methane, right? The methane gets burned in an engine, you create electricity. It's as simple as that. The gas capture, the electricity burns, but the output of that system is compost, right? So you, when you burn when you burn this methane, you're capturing the gas. You're not just you're not burning all the garbage. With the garbage is still there and it becomes this usable material that they can grow food in. So the idea is they can grow food instead of picking it out of the garbage. Again, we're back to why this is a problem and the scope of this problem. So they live in a garbage dump. I want to keep on saying that because sometimes it doesn't click right away. The low margin that they work in is that they're part of a corrupt system that takes advantage of it and that's the way it is right now. And their children are born into that system, children are born into this landfill, and they continue in that process. They have limited education, because education is not available. They have limited infrastructure and resources, meaning they don't have running water, they don't have electricity, they don't have cute bathrooms, right? But they do have a school, in this one case, which is the only case, for the most part. Then, again, this produces a situation where they have very few opportunities for advancement. Back to climate change, serious health issues, since the garbage dump is always on fire, and 
all the material is not being used. So here's one shot of the waste. You can see it's on fire, it's mixed waste. There's no management. It just gets piled up and dumped. In most cases, it's about 10,000 tons per day for most of these large cities. And there's various locations around the world, but basically the problem that, the way we're presenting the solution is that you combine the unutilized waste that's as product of burning, combine it with the inexpensive proven technology of this gas capture, it's more than 60 years old. So there's no barriers in intellectual property and things like that. And then you have a community-based model. Again, these people have to want it to happen. And once, as they begin to understand that they're already doing what's necessary to, to do this, they'll just do it. And luckily in the case that we're dealing with, the school is there and it becomes a perfect mechanism to show them what they need to do. Then again, we had to break it down into how they get involved. Not everyone's going to want to sort garbage. Not everyone will hopefully be sorting garbage. But you have to give them options. The ability to farming is an option. This composting is an option. Growing food instead of picking out of garbage is an option. Uh, selling the recyclables that they capture. Most of it's destroyed in the fire. The parts that are normally destroyed that isn't part of the network of economics that already exists can be used and can be recycled. It creates jobs. Electricity. The creation of handicrafts, everything's handmade, can be sold through some of our partners. They can do that with electricity, runs a sewing machine. Oh, 20 times more productive than hand sewing? I'm not sure, but I'm sure it would help. An outdoor seminar, they have no entertainment. They are living in a garbage dump. You've got you to imagine, it's an emotional, the, the capital here is emotional. So you have to imagine that you're in your house and your power goes off. It's very hot outside. Your house starts to warm up. Your cell isn't working. Your house is on fire. But that's the way your house always is. It's always on fire, and the power is off, and it's really hot, and your cell phone doesn't work. That really is not a fun situation. So, and of course, there's no entertainment. <laughs> so an outdoor cinema sounds strange, but it's an option to basically drug use, which is the most rampant form of entertainment in this environment. But it all centers around electricity. With this co-op model, again, they have to buy in. You literally are giving them ownership of what's being done here. You know, granted, it's not a $50 million project, but it's a generator, it's refrigerators, it's power lines, it's lighting, it's fans. You know, there's, there's so many aspects to it. If they feel it is theirs, then they'll also protect it to a certain extent. We have phases, right? We look at this as a, as a problem where you can't obviously start from, you know, a 10 megawatt power plant selling to the grid and generating revenue to make other projects like this and various other locations that people who live just like this, right? So you have to start off with this grassroots methodology. But basically, you're just enabling them to do things that they're going to want to do, if they didn't have to sort through the garbage all day or laid out, strung out in their home, if you want to call it that, you want to give them somewhere to go to. So electrifying the entire community, electrifying the grid. Most of these places are usually 50% worse in power deficit. Lagos has 80%, 80% of the time their power is off. Okay, so a resource like this is only going to be in demand. And once you've institutionalized a grid, a, a, a power source into a community that has that massive demand with the school and the infrastructure to support this level of poverty, it'll never go away because they're dependent on it, just like anything. So this is available, this technology is old, it, but it's being innovated right here at Rutgers. It's called the Eco Complex. They have systems that are operating right now and they're doing this kind of work, this technology. Here's your school at the edge of the landfill, right? Literally in the garbage dump. Okay. It's, I just want to make sure that you understand. So they have problems with, obviously, insects, with the smoke, since it's always on fire. A lot of children lose their sense of smell. One other major problem, which I'll get into later, is inside the school, they have no some limited resources. Here, this is how they live to the most part. Uh, you can see that they're raised off the ground where they sleep, in essence. 
Uh, there's a two foot flood stage because it's limestone. This is also why they can't grow food in this particular region. Uh, and some other places it's similar. They also have serious problems with wild animals and insects because they're living in a garbage dump. 